Good morning on Tuesday, September 11th. I'm Nathan Kratz, Communications Manager at Prevention Action Alliance, and I'm here with Marcy Seindel, our Executive Director. We've got a legislation-filled advocacy webinar for you. Uh, and without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Marcy. Marcy? Good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to be with you this morning on September 11th, and uh, just take a moment to remember what this day was like uh, 17 years ago now. And uh, I was sitting in the governor's office at that time, and it was a day that's etched firmly in my mind and one that uh, probably is in everyone else's mind as well. Um, so we, uh, jumping right in here, let's, first thing that we want, I want to talk about is uh, the Ohio legislature. We have the House of Representatives and the Senate we're currently out of session. Uh, they are very much focused on midterm elections. Originally, we anticipated they would be back in uh, for a day or two at the end of this month. Right now, we're not so sure that that will happen. They all seem to be very focused on these, um, these midterm elections, so we're doubtful that they will come back. Then, as we were sitting in uh, a meeting yesterday discussing what this might look like, it sort of depends on how uh, the makeup of the legislature goes once uh, the election is over as to what will happen. If the legislature turns and it uh, turns to uh, another uh, party in power, there could be lots of flurry of activities at the end of this uh, term. So in uh, the end of November and December, lots could be happening if it stays as its same uh, composition that it is now. Uh, there could be little to nothing happening, and they'll just gear up for a new session in January. So we'll keep our eyes on it, <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll uh, keep you updated. But for right now, there'll be very little to report out of the Ohio legislature and the Senate uh, in the coming couple months. Okay, the uh, Ohio Medical Marijuana Control Program is supposed to be up and running. That was supposed to have happened on Saturday, but the program is not operational at this point. It's not operational for several reasons. One is that the process just took longer to get through than was anticipated due to appeals and to lawsuits. Uh, and, uh, and right now, it's the licensing procedures that are slowing it down and not necessarily because of the state, but because of uh, local licensing procedures are slowing all the uh, big grows and the, the uh, smaller grows, uh, getting them licensed and through the local process is slowing this down. There is, I believe, three different, um, <clears throat> there's three different uh, cultivators that are actively uh, planting right now. So as they plant and they get their product starting to grow, there's a good possibility that there will be product available uh, in the next couple months and will be able to be sent to the, the uh, processors and then uh, onto the testing laboratory so that they can go to the dispensaries. So look for the end of the month or end of December or the first part of January for that to be up and, and running. Um, all the license, dispense and license, Dispensary licensing is being done now as well, so they should be in a good place by the time the product is ready to hit. So we will see what this um, new program and this new way of life in Ohio will look like in just a couple of months. If you are looking for additional information, I call your attention again to the 1-8300-3300 number that's uh, on the, the slide or go to the uh, medicalmarijuana.ohio.gov website. There's uh, lots of good information there that can keep you up to date. Additionally, there will be a uh, medical marijuana advisory committee meeting this Thursday uh, morning in the Rife Center downtown. It is open to the public, although the public uh, does not or are unable to provide input or ask questions, but they can be there to observe. So if anyone is interested in doing that, you are always welcome to come to any one of those meetings. Well, we've had a lot of questions about CBD oil. Uh, that has, I don't know about anyone else, but I certainly can speak for myself. In my inboxes, in my um, email systems, there seems to be an advertisement for CBD oil all the time, and it's proclaimed to be a health care sort of or a health uh, substance to increase and improve your health. It's, it will, a lot of claims of what it can do, none of which is, of course, scientifically backed up. 
There's a lot of anecdotal information about that you can find in lots of different places. But it seems to be something that's out there and being promoted as something that is just absolutely necessary for one's health and uh, for many, many different conditions. Just know that we finally got clarification on that from the Ohio uh, uh, Pharmacy Board, and it in fact is illegal in the state of Ohio. Whether it's made, uh, or comes from the hemp plant or from the cannabis plant, both oils are considered um, illegal unless they come through the marijuana um, medical marijuana program in the state of Ohio. So therefore, it should be grown in the state of Ohio under the uh, the, the guise or the the, at the information that's provided to the cultivators and their products. It needs to go through um, all of the testing. It needs to go through the the, the license uh, uh, processor. So everything about it needs to be licensed through the state of Ohio. So the things that you're seeing on the internet, maybe in health food stores. All of that uh, is technically illegal at this point. And they are, um, as I said, they're very firm about this. I'm not sure that anyone is doing anything to truly regulate that and, uh, and uh, call people into to question when they find the products. But uh, it has been, and I think there was something that came through today I haven't even had a chance to read yet, that talks about it's not being pulled off the shelves quite yet. So this is something that coalitions can take a look at and study <clears throat> in your communities is where it's being uh, offered and what types of stores, and then provide that information uh, so that we can take a look of seeing how we can keep the regulations on this uh, in, in check. One of the other things, uh, and at, uh, at the end of this uh, webinar, if you have questions about any of this, please uh, jot them down or send them on to the screen, and Nathan and I will be glad to, to address them. This week also, or I guess it was technically last week, there was a state representative who called a press conference to offer the suggestion of providing that the legislature would and should create a cabinet-level position or a cabinet-level office to be basically like a drug star in the state of Ohio. And what that cabinet would do would be focus on all drug policy and coordinate things uh, at the state level and coordinate with the uh, local level uh, administrations to make sure that we're in alignment in our drug policies. This backing of this particular proposal comes from local government leaders as well, many feeling that there hasn't been a coordinated effort at the state coordinating with local efforts and that this cabinet would likely be the one that would be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> certainly this is something that legislatures can do, but it's certainly something that either candidate, if they become a governor, can do as well. I know that uh, both candidates have indicated that they were uh, agreeable to it. In fact, Mike DeWine actually brought this up as a uh, proposal several months ago. So it's not a new new proposal, but it's one that we might want to keep a look out to see if it does have uh, legs and will take place, whether it be through the office of the governor or through the legislature. Because I think there's some things that should be learned from communities, especially about what you need in the communities to make things work more effectively. And will this be the system to help? Or will just uh, making sure that we have a, a good coordination with the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Service, if that's still a, a great way of making it happen. These are the kinds of things where we can be helpful as citizens and as providers and prevention specialists to offer at the uh, state level to give suggestions and ideas about how to make things work better. It's always a time when there is a new administration coming in to kind of reset, to evaluate, and to come up with solutions that will be helpful in our future to make things go better. So this is the time that we encourage you to offer those things up directly to your legislature or directly to the candidates, or you can funnel them to us here at Prevention Action Alliance, and we would be glad to help serve as a voice uh, for you as uh, yeah, individually your voices as well in this area. <clears throat> Congress is um, moving forward with uh, some very critical uh, opiate legislation right now. The um, 
uh, three bills that will probably be addressed this week, in fact, in Congress are listed on the screen here, which um, you can have the different uh, Senate bills and the uh, House of Representatives bill there. Uh, each one has a, a different segment of, of uh, dealing with the opiate crisis that's important. Uh, one called the Opiate Crisis Response Act, uh, the Ohio, or the, I'm sorry, the Substance Abuse Prevention Act 2018 is another one, and then the support for patients and communities. Last week in my uh, weekly update, we listed out what those different um, um, acts will require, what the major points are of them, so that you can study that. No, I won't take the time to go through that day, this, this day, but I encourage you to go back and take a, take a look, or if you would like that resent to you, uh, let us know, and we'll resend that to you so you can take a look at, that, at it. We encourage you to talk to your legislators or your Congress and, the, and U.S. Senators to talk about these and the importance of them. We believe that there is uh, enough we hope support at a Congress level to have these passed, but hearing from their constituents is always important to make sure that they do pass, because sometimes we think it's a, a done deal and in fact something comes along the way. Your voice is powerful and we encourage you to use your voice whenever possible to let your uh, legislators and congressmen know how you believe and feel about things. Ballot issue one is coming up, and I just had a meeting this morning about this, and I I believe this is something that um, we all need to really understand what this is about, and we need to have our voices heard about it. Prevention Action Alliance, I'll be working with my board on Friday to get permission, but we are going to come out, uh, if I can get the agreement of the board, and I see no reason why I shouldn't, we're going to come out against issue one. The reasons for this are is that that there is um, it makes any amount of possession of uh, of a deadly drug, including fentanyl, uh, meth, cocaine, uh, heroin, name the drug, all of it becomes a misdemeanor if it's found in your possession, and for no uh, there are no levels of 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 that permit you to have or not have. So for example, if someone pulls into the state of Ohio and if this bill should pass or if this ballot initiative a pass, anybody from out of state can pull into Ohio with a truckload of heroin or whatever they want to and if they're stopped, it will not be confiscated. It will be um it will be a misdemeanor and uh it just opens the ability for the drug trafficking to increase widely in the state of Ohio. This is certainly not something that, that we want to ha happen. Um, it also uh, will damage Ohio's economy, we believe, and job development efforts, because if we're having trouble now with individuals who can't meet drug tests, then if we open up the ability to have just about any drug you want on you without any serious consequences, uh, then the ability to find people who uh, are drug-free could become an increasingly more difficult place thing to happen in the state of Ohio. And again, so this isn't good for it. Um, again, we always, and we always talk about this, anything that goes through a ballot initiative or becomes part of the Ohio Constitution is problematic to us. is because it only takes another constitutional amendment to change it, which usually means a lot of organization, millions of dollars to change something that's not working well. And as I've said many times, no legislation out of the gate is 100% perfect in how it, it, it takes place. It usually needs to be tweaked and revisited at every time. They can do that in the legislature, but much more difficult to do and much more expensive to do when in the Constitution. So this is not a way that we believe is a good way to legislate. Do we believe that there needs to be more treatment? Yes. Do we need to believe that there needs to be um, more ability to make sure that people that have uh, an addiction or a substance use disorder needs to be into good treatment and good recovery and good recovery housing, all of those things? Absolutely yes. But this particular thing does not address that. It, it claims that it will save money, and it won't. 
It claims that there'll be more people into treatment, but they use the word rehabilitation, not really necessarily treatment. We don't believe that it will solve that problem. So it's a problem that needs to be addressed, but not in this uh, particular uh, venue. Uh, right now, it looks like there could be uh, as many as 10,000 uh, individuals, felony offenders in the Ohio prisons and communities that will be let out. Some of those, maybe it makes sense for them to be let out. Many others, it doesn't. And um, once they start to apply for this, the court system will be completely inundated with those requests. The court dockets will become to a halt as they try to work through it. And since they are now misdemeanors instead of felony cases, felony cases will always overtake uh, precedence over the misdemeanor cases. And so the system will become increasingly bogged down. We also are in favor here of drug courts and the fact that drug courts can bring people through the system of that, making sure that they get into the treatment and into the processes that they need for recovery with that carrot to make sure if they don't follow into what needs to be done, that, that there is also the possibility of sentencing. These, these work, we know they work. We've heard many testimony from individuals who've gone through it that said if it weren't for the drug courts or for the system that I came through, I wouldn't be here today. So we have to start to honor and look at those things and study it and not have a millionaire or a billionaire as the case, two billionaires as the case is, from outside the state of Ohio funding a campaign to change the laws in, camp in, in Ohio that may in fact not do anything to help what we need to do. You'll be hearing more from me on this as the time goes on. We, as I said, I'm starting to become very passionate the more I dig into this and understand what it means for Ohio. This is not something that uh, we at Prevention Action Alliance will feel is good policy for the state of Ohio. And uh, we wanna make sure that we educate as many people as we can about the potential dangers involved around this. So stay tuned for this and I will be glad to get inf more information out to you as we get it pulled together. Um, also just want to follow up with another slide on that to you know that uh, the opposition to this ballot initiative is starting to, to come together. Uh, the Chief Justice of the State of Ohio, uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, O'Connor, has come out very strongly against this, as did the Attorney General Mike DeWine came out very strongly against this yesterday as well and uh, there'll be more and more individuals we understand that will be taking stand on this in the future so we uh, encourage you uh, to stay tuned and to uh, to learn as much as you can about it okay that's those are the main things that i have right now and i'm really looking forward to uh, the opportunity to discuss some things with you if you have questions do we have uh, we don't have any questions right now, so if you have one, please go ahead and use the question feature to send us a question, and we'll make sure that we can answer it here on the air. Um, I see a hand raised. Um, I think that that is a separate, the hand raising, I think, is separate than the question feature. Um, but we will certainly answer any questions that you may have. Uh, and if you think of one later, too, please feel free to email Marcy or to contact us and we will try to answer any and all of your questions. Um, I did want to throw in, I was at a, a community fair here in Columbus not that long ago, uh, maybe three months ago, and there were several um, vendors who were selling CBD oil at the fair. Um, nobody seemed to be doing anything about it, but what I found was um, also interesting uh, with my marketing uh, experience, I want to know that um, there are people who, or the, the, they were marketing the resources as not just pain relief, but also in other ways. So I saw CBD oil dog food, for instance, which is, I'm just going to go out there and say it's a terrible idea. Don't give your dog CBD um, unless your veterinarian recommends it, maybe. <laughs> um and so just keep an eye out for those things. I see them come up as sleep aids, as dog food, as cat food, different things that <clears throat> no one probably has done any research on. Uh, the only medically approved use of CBD oil that I think we're aware of is Epidiolex, um, which is specific to two types of uh, disorders that cause uh, seizures. 
Uh, we do have a question, actually. Um, our hand raiser wants to know, is there a way for us to report facilities that are selling CBD oil and such since we know it's illegal now? Um, I will find out that that's a great question, and thank you. Um, I will be at that meeting on Thursday since uh, I am a part of that uh, marijuana uh, advisory commission, and so I will ask that question at the meeting. Meanwhile, if um, um, I think local, let me double check. I, I think if you, you uh, uh, mention it to your local authorities, many of them won't have any idea and figure that, that they won't need to do it. But I think it's important to do in the regulatory process at the state level that they know about it. So whether that would be out of the Department of Commerce or out of the uh, Ohio um, Pharmacy Board, um, where they may have a hotline or something that we can do, I'll let you know. So we'll we'll get your information and we'll, we'll let you all know through a uh, uh, a uh, weekly update as to to where where that is, but we we would be interested to know. So if you want to shoot me an email, uh, where that is, if you see it, I would be glad to take that information and take it to the folks at the state. All right, that is our time for today. Um, and oh, and Andrea also wants to say say thanks for taking action. Um, that is our time for today. And uh, if you again, if you think of any questions after, please feel free to email us. We're going to go ahead and end this webinar and get you all your certificates. Um, we'll see you uh, next month, and we'll be looking forward to hearing from you.